apologies for that. Um, I appreciate the invitation to come to Mexico City to talk um, at this conference today uh, with such an esteemed group of other speakers. Particularly like to thank Patty and Gabby for arranging it and for arranging for my travel over. Um, my talk is a personal one and it will relate a number of um, activities which are being undertaken in the area where Leonora Carrington was born. Now my background is as a film producer and an executive producer of films and I'm a professor of film at Edgehill University which is just on the fringes of the Green Belt near Liverpool. Now eagle-eyed uh, members of the audience will have noticed that I'm timing my talk with my Beatles watch. <laughs> As you all know, they are the best export from Liverpool. Now, I first came across Leonora Carrington uh, when I read an obituary about her death in 2011 in The Guardian, British newspaper, and the obituary was written by Joanna Moorhead, who was uh, a member of the Carrington family and has also written a number of books about Leonora Carrington. But what surprised me was two things. The first thing was, as somebody who's involved uh, in the media and in art and culture in the UK, the name Leonora Carrington was unfamiliar to me. I hadn't come across her name. There are, there's Dora Carrington, there's also the Carrington family in Dallas, they were the greedy oil, oil uh, avaricious family in that soap. But Leonor Carrington's name was, was new to me. That surprised me, and it made me wonder why the history and the culture of this great artist was not so well known in the country of her birth. There had been a number of recent exhibitions. There was a great one in Chichester, which Stefan was involved with, I believe. But generally, her name was not that well known. That surprised me. The second thing that struck me was in the obituary, it mentioned that she was born in Clayton Le, Le Woods, Chorley. Now I realized that that was eight miles away from my university. And it made me think there should be some activities developed to honor and celebrate her work in the area where she's from. Now that's why I've used this very unusual word, re-Lancastrianization of Leonora Carrington. Now, it's a mouthful to say in English. It's probably a mouthful in Spanish. However, if you are from Lancashire, which is the county within which she was born, you are called a Lancastrian. The same if you're from Me Mexico, you are called a Mexican. If you're from Liverpool, like me, you're called a Scouser. If you're from Lancashire, you are called a Lancastrian. So, with colleagues at the university, we began a process of what we call the re lancastrianization of Leonora Carrington. And, and that is continuing. And I'd just like to explain a number of initiatives that we've been involved with. And we think it's important for three reasons. The first is, we'd like to honor the influence of the area where she's from in her work. Now, when I spoke to Gabby at an exhibition in, in Liverpool, I said, did your, did your mother um, remember Lancashire fondly? And he said, she thought about it all the time. So to me, there was a clue in, in that, and in also the work that she continued to make that had references and allusions back to the topography, the landscape, the kind of visual um, atmosphere that's in that part of the world. The second thing we thought was important was to, to map out something of the presence of Leonora Carrington in that part of the UK. Homes where she lived in, places where she would have frequented until at 18 or was it 19 she left to go to London. So there are places that the family are connected to, there's work that she may have undertaken, um, vistas, landscapes, etc., that she may have uh, depicted and painted. 
scenes from that part of the world. We also thought it was important that we should consider initiatives in that area that are about Queen Laura Carrington, that bring her work to greater awareness and attention. So the first thing that, that I did was that I went to Dublin to see an amazing exhibition that Sean Kinsale had put on at the Irish Museum of Modern Art. And that drew me into an understanding of some of the concerns that Leonora Carrington had about women's liberation, about student politics in Mexico, and along with the other work that I began to get to know about, I also began to understand, having been involved in the film industry, that Leonora Carrington had also uh, a, a film background. Not as a director or as a producer, but she was involved as an art director on a number of movies, uh, with her son at times. There was also um, performances in Mexican movies with Louis, Louis Benuel, albeit fleetingly. But for me as a film person, this also gave me some interesting resonances. So I wanted to explore those. But the main thing that I wanted to do was I wanted to encourage a major gallery in the northwest of England to mount an exhibition about Leonore Carrington. And I struck gold with Tate Liverpool. Because the curator there, the artistic director there, Francesco Manacorda, took up the idea, and with the support of the Mexican Embassy in London and the Carrington family, he put on with his colleagues there, and with the support from my university, and myself as a specialist advisor, a really fantastic exhibition. Um, and it was able to bring over to, to Liverpool members of the Carrington family from Mexico, but also a group of the Carrington family that I had begun to get to know actually in the northwest of England because the Carrington family and the Moorhead family are still very much prominent and present in that part of the country. And one of the things that came out of getting to know the family was finding aspects and items of Leonora's work that hadn't yet been publicly exhibited. And one of the gems, I think, in the exhibition was an, um, a number, I think it was 10 in the end, uh, of early drawings from about 1932 in the sequence and series Sisters of um, the Moon. Some of these had been in the family ownership and had never been seen publicly. So this exhibition was a great opportunity to be able to get material that had been in, in a house, literally five minutes drive from my university. So I was able to kind of, res in a sense, rescue these and with the support of the Tate, we were able to put them on. Also, the Tate included a, a film element in the exhibition. So be uh, along with the, um, the exhibition of Tate Liverpool, my colleagues have been involved with the writing background of Leonora, so my department of creative writing have been uh, running events where her work has been either read out aloud or discussed, and a colleague has had a short story influenced by Leonora's work published. My dance colleagues have been wor have worked uh, a dance piece called Imaginarium, which was performed at Tate Liverpool during the exhibition, and that was performed eight times. It's now online, it's a film record a recording of the dance, and they have performed that imaginary and dance piece now at half a dozen international conferences. The third thing that came out of, of that exhibition was a number of in conversations that we held at the campus. One in particular was, was with Joanna Moorhead, where she debated and discussed Leonora's work with Francesca Manacorda, the artistic director of Tate Liverpool. And we've made that available um, online and we've had, I think, getting on for 800 viewings of that discussion, which is a fascinating piece of reflection on Leonora Carrington's work. A, f a final thing to mention in this uh, current read of Lancasterianization of Leonora Carrington is that Edgehill University now has a building called the Leonora Carrington Building. And it's in a series of buildings that reflect great Lancastrians from the county of Lancashire. And along with a politician um, or a, an industrialist, there is now 
at Leonor Accountant Building, with, uh, recognizing her contribution to art. So uh, we feel we're doing our bit to bring back attention to the, this great artist in the area where she's from and which obviously she fled from at 18 because it had a very constricting and restraining uh, familial uh, collar on her and her work. But interestingly and intriguingly, aspects of the Lancashire she knew permeates through her work. And I find that um, a very interesting um, conundrum. Now, as we move forward um, and uh, celebrate the centenary today, this morning I had some selfies from my colleagues at the Carrington sign on campus, which they've sent over, um, which they wanted me to show Gabby and Patty, I'll show them to them later, but they're by the Carrington sign. And at the end of June, June the 30th, we are running a symposium at Edge University um, when we will uh, have a number of key speakers. In fact, our keynote speaker uh, is here today and she's speaking later today, that's Dr. Katrina Makara. But we will be premiering as well two films which have been made in the last year about Leonora Carrington. Well, one's about Chloe Amichidis and Leonora Carrington, and that's by Josh Aspen Gazy. And the second is a documentary that's been commissioned by the BBC about Leonora Carrington to honour the centenary, and that's been directed by Teresa Griffiths. Intriguingly, the exec producer of that film, that documentary, is Tilda Swinton, the uh, UK act act actor, now Hollywood. on that day, and if you would like to know more about it, just call me later and I'll explain more and I'll give you the information. Now just finally to finish, and my Beatles watch says that I've got two minutes left, I just wanted to read something out because this is a, this is a reflection of how little Leonora's work is known except for the sterling efforts of individuals like Stefan and Joanna Moorhead in the UK. Um, it was a letter to a very, very local paper, and it said, Dear Editor, I was saddened to read of the death of the surrealist artist Leonora Carrington, who was born in Clayton the Woods, daughter of Harold Carrington, who owned the two mills in Eccleston, and I'm from the village next door. I was lucky to have seen an exhibition of Leonora's work at the Harris Museum and Art Gallery in Preston about 30 years ago. Preston is another small town in Lancashire. I was absolutely enthralled by her paintings. I'd never seen anything like them. They were fascinating. After I had seen them, I read up on Leonora and found that her life and her paintings and her artwork were so exciting. There should have been a film made about her life. Well, there is now, we know, there's several. I just don't understand why she won't be more appreciated in England, or indeed her place of birth, Lancashire. There is a small corner in bygone times in Eccleston. Bygone times must be a small cafe or something. And Eccleston is a tiny village. There's a small corner in bygone times in Eccleston, which is one of her father's mills. And it had a small tribute to her, but that's now disappeared. What a great woman, Vivian Coles. Now I love something like that because that tells me that one minute, okay? That tells me that the interest in her work is there, and we just have to find new ways to get the work into the in front of those people. And just as I finish, this is an interesting piece of uh, data that the Tate Liverpool Art Gallery Museum uh, found out. When they were planning the exhibition about Leonor Carrington in 2015, they expected that they would get 8,000 visitors, because they have to give these figures to the powers that be, the Arts Council. 
They actually had 16,000. They had twice the number of visitors that they expected to get to see the Leonora Carrington exhibition. And you have to pay to go to these exhibitions at Tate Liverpool. What that proved to them and to us is that there's an un and this is to do with the UK, obviously, there's an unacknowledged, and I would call it fandom, of interest in her work that for many lots of reasons hasn't really been acknowledged or even challenged in the way that it should be. And that's what we mean by the re-Lancasterianisation of Leonora Carrington. Thank you.